In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. Welcome to this service of Stations of the Cross, as during the course of this Holy Week we recall the key moments from the passion and death of Jesus. For each of the stations there is a short reading, a reflection and a prayer, together with an image for you to reflect on. You are invited to ponder and pray alongside us. The reflections offered have been specifically written by Stephen Cottrell, soon to be the next Archbishop of York. The reflections seek to draw us into the story on a very personal level, encouraging us to imagine ourselves in the midst of the scene, watching and reflecting on the events as they unfold before us. So let us come into the presence of God in a moment of silence. Today we reflect on the third and fourth stations of the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. He wouldn't really answer their questions. That frustrated us as much as them. We wanted him simple. We wanted him plain. But he comes to us all in the frail, undignified vulnerability of flesh. I am. That's what he kept on saying. I am the bread. I am the vine. I am the truth. I am the way. That was all he had to say when they arrested him. I am he. And it was all they needed him to say to kill him. For these are the words that God said to Moses when he refused to answer his question straight. I am who I am. I will be what I will be. So they didn't look for anything else. They missed the overwhelming silence of his presence before them, which was, if they could have seen it, the breath that is taken between one movement of the dance ending and another about to start. I didn't see it either. I too was disillusioned. I too was unprepared for the music he would sing. Though I am learning that he is like bread, broken, and he is like wine, poured, and he is a truth I never dreamed of. He is a way I find it hard to follow. How is it that the way to life leads straight to dying? Lord Jesus, you were the victim of religious bigotry. 
Be with those who are persecuted by those in authority. You face the condemnation of fearful hearts. Deepen the understanding of those who shut themselves off from the experience and wisdom of others. To you, Jesus, unjustly judged victim, be honour and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Fourth station, Peter denies Jesus. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Peter got it right for once. He said he didn't know him. He said he wasn't with him. That was how we were all feeling. We didn't know him. We weren't with him anymore. We thought he would vindicate himself. Wasn't that where everything else had been leading? How could we think otherwise when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, just like the prophets said? or when he declared that the temple could be torn down and rebuilt in three days. But now we just felt stupid and scared. He wasn't the Messiah. We didn't really know him at all. Maybe we never had. And that's how I feel at the moment. I feel stupid. I feel scared. I feel I don't know him and can't follow him. But I can't let go of him either. I keep thinking that something else will happen that will make sense of all this senselessness. When the cock crows, it isn't just Peter who is reminded of his failing. I know with the dawn of each new day that I am not the person I am meant to be, that I have much to learn about love, that his words of peace and forgiveness have not yet entered my soul and changed me so that even if I was led away like him, I could keep on loving. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as Peter betrayed you, you experienced the double agony of love, rejected and friendship denied. Be with those who know no friends and are rejected by society. You understood the fear within Peter. Help us to understand the anxieties of those who fear for their future. To you, Jesus, 
who gazed with sadness at your lost friend. Be honour and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together for the coming of God's kingdom in the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom of priests to stand and serve before our God. To him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour, glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen.